let's assume that we have a food truck and uh, you know food trucks sell food but also some drinks as well and they sell some soda cans one dollar each and they have some discount if you buy more so if you buy four there's a 50 cent discount and uh, if you buy six there's an additional 50 cents discount okay and uh, here uh, at the end of the day there are seven cans left and uh, the food truck is about to close let's say it's waiting for somebody to come up and buy some soda cans before they uh, go home and f of x would be the price that would be paid if somebody comes and buys x number of cans okay so in such a case what would be the domain and range of the function f of x let's think about that okay so uh, can you buy can x be negative one no you can't buy negative one cans uh, can x be seven yeah. yeah can x be eight no, no. okay can x be 0 0.5 <coughs> No, there's, you can't buy 0.5 amount of cans. Well, it will, you will have to destroy the can, so it doesn't make sense. Uh, can you buy zero? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have, yeah, you don't have to buy. So I, I guess that's, that's not so clear here. So uh, maybe if I'm, I have to grade this, then I'll probably give correct, uh, full, full credit to people who include zero or not include zero. For us, let's just include zero for the sake of it, okay? So let's first think about the domain. What are the allowed numbers if we allow zero? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Those are the only allowed numbers. That will be the domain. Because uh, what's a domain? Domains are the allowed inputs to the function, right? Things that you're allowed to plug into the function. Okay, what, what about the range? Well, if you buy zero, what's the price? Zero. If you buy one can, it's one. If you, if you buy two cans, it's two. Three, it's three. But now, if you buy four, what is it? Instead of, instead of having to charge $4, there's a 50 cent discount, right? So four minus 50 cents, what's that? 350 and then what about five 450 because you uh, you pay 350 for four cans but then you have to buy one more so it's 450 how about six because well six cans should be six dollars but there are 50 cents and another additional 50 cents so one dollar discount so it's Six minus one, which is five dollars. <coughs> and then seven, it'll be six. Okay, good. So that will be your range. Now let's try to draw the graph. All right, on the x-axis, let's put the inputs. So it could be like one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we need the same spacing on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you have to start <coughs> marking 0 comma 0 if you buy 0 cans the price is 0 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma not 4 but down here 3.5 sorry that doesn't look right I'm, I'm looking at it from side so it doesn't look right uh, just right here and then here 
<coughs> okay. So these are the points. Maybe I should make it slightly darker. Now it, it's tempting to connect these by curves, but you shouldn't do that because if you connect them, that means you're allowing numbers in between to be plugged in, but that's not what you have, right? Only you have like discrete numbers. You have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 discrete, and you have discrete possible values. So that's the function. All right, so now comes the big topic of today. Uh, what is the... What is the F inverse of $450? What do you think? What's F? So F of X gives you the money if you provide the number of cans bought. What will be F inverse of 450 Yeah. That is, uh, yeah, actually, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Yeah. So the answer is 5. And the way you think about it is that we have here 5 comma 450, right? So what, what the inverse function does is it's a function that switches input and output. So I imagine this. Uh, uh, your, your friend bought some soda and uh, he just shows you the receipt. Uh, it has to be reimbursed for something. Okay? But the receipt doesn't tell how many of which was bought. It just has like the amount 450. And now you have to somehow fill in some paperwork saying that you, you really bought five. Okay? So s sometimes just from the amount paid, you have to figure out what the actual things were bought. Right? You have to do the inverse process. And the function that does such a thing is called the inverse function. So what inverse function does is that inverse function switches input and output. Okay. That's what inverse function does. Inverse function switches input and output. Uh, the, Input becomes the output, output becomes the input. So here, the input was number of cans bought, output was the price that you have to pay. Over here, for the inverse function, it's the price you paid, and the output will be how many cans you actually bought for that price to be have paid. Okay. So that's what you have. <coughs> okay, let's do another exercise. What's F inverse of 350 and then F. Let's do this one by one. You have F of what? What's F inverse of 350? Four. Four cans need to be bought you know, to be paid uh, 350, $3.50. What is F of four? You're back to 350 again, right? Yes? That's the answer, yeah. That's a simple, simple question. Uh, but what we learned from here is that if you apply inverse and then the original function again, you're going to get back what you plugged in. Isn't that right? Yeah, if you plug in 350, you're going to get back 350 <coughs> because f and f inverse, they, can't, they basically cancel each other. So one of the important identities that you, you will need to know is that if you put an f inverse inside the function f, you're going to get back x. Okay. And if you have a function and you apply an inverse function to the function, you're going to get back x because it's like there's a cancellation happening between the two. Now, we're not multiplying. You have to be careful. When, you, when we write like this, 
we're plugging in a function into the other function. Uh, that's called function composition. And sometimes, instead of being written this way, you will see that often it's written like f circle f inverse of x equals to x, and f inverse circle f of x equals to x. That's another way to write it. And this small circle means it's not the product. It means that you're plugging this function into the other function. That's what this means. It's a function composition. Now this, this way of, uh, th these two identities will be very crucial when we learn logs later in this semester. Yeah. Okay, now let's draw the graph of f inverse of x. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. And then there's also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so if somebody paid one dollar, well, zero would be zero. If somebody paid one dollar, how many cans did he buy? One. If the payment was $2, that means two cans were bought. $3, three. But then it's not four, it's three fifty. And how many cans were bought? Four. Slightly left. I'm viewing it from the side, so it's like, sorry. <laughs> it's really hard to draw correctly if you're looking from the side. Then five, uh, instead of 5, you have 4.5, leading you to 5. Uh, look here. Maybe higher. And then 4.5 somewhere here. And then uh, you have 5, which gives you 6, and 6, which is 7. So that's the graph. Now, if you overlay this picture to this picture, what you're going to see is that things that are on this y equals to x line wouldn't change. That they, those two would be overlapping. Okay? But the things that fall below the, this dotted line will be basically flipped over the y equals to x. We did something like this last time, right? Yeah, yeah. flipping over the, the diagonal line. So if you do this, then you're going to have something that's symmetric with respect to y equals to x. So an additional fact that you learn from this exercise is that the graph of the f inverse is, uh, is a reflection over the line y equals to x. So that's important, so let me write it. Uh, graph of f inverse of x is the reflection of graph of f of x uh, over y equals to x. And uh, usually you don't have to say this. It's, it's kind of given, right? So graph of f inverse is the reflection over y equals x. That's what we learned.